Hi, I'm Hazel, and these are my first impressions of Overwatch from the perspective of somebody who has absolutely never really played a shooter before. I'm completely new to them. I guess I played Orion Dino Horde that one time, like two years ago, or whenever it was that was, and that was awful. Um, but I've never touched, I've never touched CSGO, I've never touched uh, TF2 or Halo or anything like that. And the reason for that, and the reason I thought I wouldn't be playing Overwatch was because first-person games in general, not just shooters, but first-person games, have a history of making me extremely and violently motion sick. But I have to say the hype got to me on Overwatch, and I watched some streams and I decided to give it a chance. And that is the first thing that I really have to say about Overwatch, is that it is very good about not aggravating my motion sickness. Depending on the character, of course. I've noticed that there's some characters that I specifically cannot play. Anybody that's too first person, the melee characters like Reinhardt or Big No-Go, um, because the camera moves too much. But for the most part, there's no real head bob going on. Um, there isn't a whole lot of motion blur or fancy bloom effects that tend to um, aggravate that sort of thing. So I've found that for anybody that is sensitive to first person games, this is the first one I have ever, ever, ever been able to play. So I do think it's worth a shot. Um, I did get a little bit more motion sick watching other people play it than I did myself because it's very easy to kind of align your vision in a way that you're not really focusing on the screen spinning, but you're instead looking for the thing that you're spinning the screen to find, if that makes any sense. Um, but the way you're able to move in Overwatch, basically, and the way the camera works has been very good for not making me vomit, which is always an A+. That's the first thing I'll say about it, is it's very motion sickness friendly, and depending on the character, of course. Some of them are a lot worse than others. Anything that's super twitchy, um, I definitely can't play, so I've been sticking to certain heroes, but there are more than enough heroes that there's probably something that you're going to be able to do. So the next thing that I want to talk about is the tutorial. Um, I was very happy with the tutorial. I mean, this is something that's really neglected in a lot of games because a lot of people or a lot of gaming companies will kind of assume that if you went and you bought this game and you spent some money on it, you probably know how to WASD and how to aim and you know what your buttons do. And that, was, that wasn't completely true for me. I mean, obviously I know how to WASD, but not everybody does. And having never shot before, it's very comforting to just be able to sit down and look at my controls and be, okay, this button, makes a rocket go off. This button does something else. This button jumps me. This and they do different things with all the different um, all the different characters. So the intro, the tutorial takes you through on Soldier 76, who I think is a really good basic um, hero to try. I'm really glad they start you out with him because he's really valid to use. And he's got like a good spread. He's got a heal ability. He's got a movement speed ability. He's got damage, um, two different kinds of damage, damage guns. So that's um, a really good place to start you out on, and the tutorial doesn't take very long. It does suggest it to you right when you start the game. And if you, like me, are completely new to shooters, I really recommend that you don't skip by that just based on pride. It won't take you very long, and you'll feel a lot better going into it. And there's kind of three different stages to this whole versus AI tutorial mode. So the first one that's the tutorial that I've mentioned, that's very, very basic just for controls. And then the second mode that I'm actually really happy they put in here, because there's so many different heroes, is they have this versus bots practice mode. Now this doesn't get you any experience, um, there's no other people in it, it basically just sticks you on a map with a bunch of these battle bots and there'll be, there'll be um, AI bots that are enemy bots, there'll be AI bots that are friendly bots. Now nobody really hits you, so you don't have to worry about getting, you know, murdered 17 times in the practice mode and then going and feeling really bad about yourself, but it's a good way for you to practice um, aiming, practice your different weapons, get a good feel for what your different abilities actually do, both in terms of friendly, because you can use heals and buffs and whatever on your friendly bots, and then of course you can sort of get a feel for exactly how your weapons behave in different environments um, on all the different heroes, and you can switch between heroes really freely in this mode. So I'm really happy with the existence of that mode, especially because there's 21 different heroes. And because of the way hero switching works once you're actually in the game, it's a good idea to familiarize, familiarize yourself with quite a few of them, because you never know when you're going to want to switch and try something out. So that's that. Um, and then the third step of these sort of practice warm-up modes that I'm really happy that they decided to include in the game is there's this versus AI mode. Now this one does put you with other players. You'll have other real people on your team, um, but it's putting you against a team of AI heroes. So it's basically a real match. It's just like the quick match, except that you're not fighting against real people so that you're slightly less likely to get super wasted. Um, the AI can kill you. They will they will attack you. Um, it is a normal game in every sense of the word, except that obviously there's not real people on the other side of it. But I found that they're of an appropriate difficulty level that when you're just getting started and again you're just trying to get your hands around some new heroes that maybe you don't have an experience before or maybe you're just super new to the game and you're not ready to fight real people yet and um, this mode is a really good really good level of AI difficulty it's not like fate I mean it's pretty easy you're probably going to win I think we only ever lost one game against the AI you're probably gonna win which is a good start but it's not so easy that you don't feel like you're learning anything so I'm really glad about that 
Um, as a new player, I was really concerned about map navigation because whenever I have kind of dipped my toes into a new style of game or a first per like a new style of multiplayer game or a first person game in the past, um, something that's happened to me a lot as a brand new player is I get lost. I, you know, my teammates are saying, okay, we're going to head down to the shadow tower. We're going to, we're going to line up on the fourth window. And I'm just like stuck behind a rock outside somewhere. Just like, I have no idea where you guys are. And the Overwatch UI is very intuitive. I found and like right from the first game, even though I had never, I hadn't really done a lot of research, I hadn't really watched a lot of footage of it, I still knew where my teammates were, I knew where the objective was, and that's really all you need to get started. Um, everything else, all the map familiarity, that'll come with time. And it's pretty easy to explore and try and find alternate ways to get to things and around things without actually getting lost. It's very hard to get actually lost. I'm really happy about that because as a new player, uh, that's something that's been a big obstacle I mean, in the past because it's really embarrassing to, you know, have people calling for you to go somewhere and you're like, well, uh, that's cool. That's a great suggestion. I'll keep that in mind. I'll put it on my agenda. But, you know, you know I have no idea how to actually get there. So the way the UI works with showing you exactly where your teammates are in a marker, it's not obnoxious. It doesn't really get in your face. Um, it's not, it didn't impede me or get in the way of, it didn't, like, distract me at all. But it does make it very easy to get back into the gameplay and get right back to where it is that you need to be. Especially if you're dying a lot, which you might do if, you, you know, you're brand new and you're in the quick play mode. So there's that. Um, I talked about, I said before there are 21 heroes, and that's enough heroes that have distinct enough play styles to mean that there's going to be a style of play that suits you. I'm really glad they didn't just make a bunch of different characters and give them slightly different guns. I'm actually really impressed with, like, the ingenuity of how different they made all these different heroes. Like, there's there's melee heroes and ranged heroes, obviously. Some people can snipe. Uh, there's this chick that freezes everybody called May. You've got, like, a freeze gun, and you, like, charge into melee, and you freeze some people, and then you can just headshot them, which is hilarious and kind of awful when it happens to you. Um, and everybody has just different strengths and weaknesses, and because of that, there's comps and there's counter comps. And if there's one hero that's just ruining your whole day in this match, you can switch to a different hero, or somebody on your team can switch to a different hero that then counters them. And then it's not all ruined, and that's the really nice thing about the hero switching, is that you're not locked into anything. You can change at any time, and it's okay to do that. There's, there's lots of stuff to try out, so there's, if you're into sniping, uh, if you want to be a really cool sniper in Overwatch, you want to be a support character, you want to heal people, or maybe you want to lay turrets and traps. Uh, maybe you just want to, like, bust in and do a bunch of damage and murder everybody. There's lots of options. Um, you want to play short range, long range, melee. There's all sorts of different things that you can do, and you can switch on the fly, so you don't have to commit to anything. You don't have to be, I said I would be a sniper, and even though I hate these characters, that's all I'm going to do. There's, there's definitely lots of opportunity to try out all the different roles, and there's no real harm in doing so. So I'm really happy with the, uh, the distinctness of all the different heroes and their play styles. I didn't actually think it would be possible within one kind of very, like, there's not a, like, there's not a whole lot, there's not any different game modes, really. There's quick match right now, and there's, you know, you score a payload, you capture an objective. It's an objective-based shooter, so there's not a whole lot of different stuff to do, so I didn't think it would be possible for them to make there that many different ways to do it. There's so many different ways to achieve your goals um, with all these different heroes. So that's really cool. And of course, they all have like these crazy vibrant personalities and emotes and skins and everything that really sucks you in and makes you fall in love with it right away. So that's that. Um, another thing that I really liked, particularly about Overwatch relative to other shooters as a new player, is the way the score screen is set up. So it'll give you statistics of how you did relative to how you've done before in that hero. It'll tell you if you got a career best um, eliminations or objective time or whatever on that particular hero and it'll show you like what you did what your best time was so you can kind of compete against yourself and it doesn't bother you with your teammate stats so if I went in and I killed two people and I died 17 times I can see that on my score screen I can see that I died 17 times and I only killed two people but the nice thing is nobody else sees that on the end screen like they might notice that I'm constantly getting murdered like in the actual game so people aren't going to be completely oblivious to the fact that you suck if you suck as badly as I do but it's not shoved in anybody's face at the end of the score screen you don't have to sit there and look at a score screen that shows you that this other person did 79% better than you um, but there are these little medals that you get so if you get a gold medal at the end of the match that means you did really well relative to your team so there's ways to kind of gauge yourself against your team without feeling really badly when you're didn't do as well especially because you're probably just learning so the score screen is really good at being careful with your ego and it doesn't bother you with your teammate stats and your teammates aren't bothered with your stats so you're not it's not as embarrassing to suck as it is on some games so there's a lot of games you go in and you're new and you just get absolutely decimated and then you feel really terrible about it so you might not want to do it again but in this game it's it's both so quick to get back into the action it's so fun to be in the action, even if you're getting demolished. And it's so it's not obvious enough to everybody else how bad you are that's going to deter you from keeping at it and getting better. 
So that's that. Um, I talked a little bit about how vibrant the heroes are, um, and that's really obvious if you've seen any of the marketing, any of the, any of the Overwatch shorts, um, or even if you just go tool around the Overwatch website, maybe you haven't bought it yet and you're just kind of thinking about it, you can go on their website and you can look at all the different heroes and you can both read their backstory and you can see their abilities. That's kind of a good way to get a feel for what you might like to play. And those are really colorful and vibrant. They feel really alive. And so do the maps. The maps are all based on geographical locations kind of across the world. And they all have their own specific flavor and also different, um, like a different layout, obviously, with different environmental hazards. Um, like there might be not, not super many environmental hazards. You're not going to find yourself just like tripping and falling off the map that often. Like that might happen once or twice, but it's not going to be an all the time kind of thing. But there are different it's set up in a different way that different heroes will be favored on different maps. So if you're a really good at one hero, you might just queue into this one map and that's just like your, your, your bomb. You're just like the best on there. And you get to have those moments of feeling like an absolute badass just because the map happened to favor you. Um, or maybe the map favors the other team and you know specifically which hero does well on that map. And then you can kind of watch out for that and change your strategy. So, so the maps really fit really nicely into the way comps and counter comps and hero advantages work. And it's nice that everything's balanced in a way that's not, um, it's not, it's not homogenized. Everybody is so distinct, but there's always a solution to everything. Now, I'm not going to say it's completely balanced. There's obviously a couple of things that could probably use some tuning, but I do have to say they're balanced enough that I don't know exactly how they would tune it. Because everybody complains about Bastion, for example. Bastion's a character that can kind of sit down as a turret and mow people down with like massive damage with this big automatic r machine gun and it's very easy to use for a new player and that can be really frustrating to deal with but the thing is if you see a bastion all you have to do is find a way behind it and then you shoot it in the butt and it's just toast like they're really vulnerable to damage from behind so it's just a matter of, of seeing the situation and then finding a solution to that and that's always really that's always really satisfying so um, I'm really happy with the game length. That's another thing is you don't always want to sit down and commit to playing four hours of the game. And I'm not going to say that you're not going to end up playing four hours of Overwatch. You almost certainly are. But uh, the games in general, they went between like five and I think the longest one was like 15 minutes. But I think they were an average like five to 10 minute games. And that felt really breezy. Um, it rolls you right into the next one. So you finish a game, it's automatically going to start putting you into the next one. So you actively have to leave. And I found that that's really hard to do unless like you're really hungry or somebody needs you or like your house is on fire. So um, you're probably going to end up spending a lot of time in it. It is a very much a big, giant black hole of a time sink because you don't notice time passing because you're having so much fun. So there's that. Uh, the leveling system, it's a good progression system. It doesn't reward you anything power-wise. You're not going to get extra abilities. You're not going to do an extra damage. Basically, all you're leveling for is bragging rights so people can see your level and your portrait on the character screen. And you're going to get loot boxes as you level, and those are a lot of fun. So loot boxes, you can buy them with uh, money if you want, um, or you can buy them with... Uh, uh, I think you just buy them with money. Or you get them as a reward as you level up. And you, it turns out that for every, like, I guess for if I played for a couple of hours, I probably got about one loot box an hour on average with the amount of speed that I was leveling at, which is probably kind of slow. But, um, and those are fun. They, they give you skins. They give you sprays, which are these things that you can just kind of spray paint on the wall if you feel like it. You probably won't have time, but it's kind of fun. Um, you can get voice lines. You can get um, little portrait icons. There's lots of cool cosmetic stuff, and they are completely cosmetic. So it's not going to be like Hearthstone, where somebody on day one dumps $600 into buying packs, and all of a sudden has all the best cards. Um, all of the heroes are unlocked for you when you purchase the game, so you're not unlocking extra heroes like that. So loot boxes are really just for skins. So you might be really jealous of somebody that's got a super cool skin, but that's about as far as that's going to go. So it's nice that there's a, a nice place for people to spend money. They really want to dump money into this, and gosh, people are dumping money into it. But it's not mandatory. It's completely cosmetic, and you do get them from leveling up. So it's not like you're completely excluded from that fun if you don't want to spend more money than whatever you spent to actually buy the game. And then as far as leveling, you get a 20% experience bonus for having even just one friend in your party, and that does not multiply if you have more than one friend. So find a buddy and play with them. It's way more fun with friends. It is kind of fun to solo queue. Everybody keeps saying it's just the worst if you solo queue, but it's not that bad. Um, but it's definitely a blast to play with friends because you can actually combo up some heroes. Some heroes will work really well together. And there's lots of coordination that you can do to really, you know, tip the match in your favor, especially if you're in voice chat with some of your buddies. So I definitely recommend playing with your friends. And let's be honest, your friends are probably playing anyways because this is the biggest hype machine that's happened since, gosh, when was the last time my game was this big? I don't even remember. And yeah, at the end of the day, this game is a blast. You can take it as casually or as seriously as you want to. I know some people are going to go real try hard on this and I applaud them for it. I'm jealous. I wish I was that good, but uh, I am perfectly happy to just kind of putter along and try different heroes 
And whenever I get to play the game, which I think has only happened like twice, but oh my gosh, it was awesome. Um, I'm just going to be happy with that. So there's room to be great, but it's also okay to suck. And that's so important for me. I'm really happy that there's this game that's just really fun and it's okay to suck. And I'd recommend that absolutely anybody that's even a little bit interested in this just gets it and tries it out. And like I said, there's going to be people to play with. Everybody's playing with it and they're playing it for good reason. It's really fun. So those are my first impressions of Overwatch. I didn't think I was going to play it. Um, I didn't think I would be able to play it. So I'm very grateful to whatever Magic Blizzard did. Maybe it's just, maybe this motion sickness thing's just all in my head. But I do remember being quite violently ill after the whole Orion Dino Horde incident. So I'm really happy with the quality of this one. And I look forward to playing it a lot more. I'm actually a little bit, a little bit upset that this, uh, now I have to choose my time between Arena Practice and Overwatch. Because Overwatch is just so much more fun. But I'm not getting any younger. That doesn't have anything to do with anything. I need to stop talking. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!